and welcome to Mums at the Table. I'm Rachel and I'm here with Shona. Shona! The Shona Show today. <laughs> We've got some good stuff coming up. So if Have you we? Don't... Yeah, L listen and you okay. will find out. <laughs> Okay, so you've had a bit of time to reflect. I've had a little bit of time to reflect. You've had more. What was the worst stage, newborn, toddler or older? And I, I can only go up to a certain point. <laughs> uh, the whole lot until they hit leaving home. <laughs> So that was the best bit when they left Lip, home. Best bit now while they've <laughs> left home. Um, I actually think for me it was toddler because I had two under three. Yeah. So that and and I had one that had special needs. Yeah. So it was it was pretty full on for me for quite a long time until pretty much school. I think special That's, needs would change the whole yeah, game. Yeah. That would so be pretty much naught to yeah. five is a bit of a blur for me. Yeah. Mm. I gotta confess, I'm not. I'm not a newborn sort of... I am now because, you know, you can hand them you back, hand them back someone yeah. else's. Smelly bum, off you go. Yeah, but I, I didn't really enjoy the newborn phase. No. And I'm, I'm really loving it now. Like, I used to hate school holidays when my kids were younger because I'm like, I've got them in my face for, you know, two, yeah. three weeks. Yeah. Whereas now I look forward to the school holidays. It's completely different. So when people said to me, it gets worse, I'm like... No, yeah, it wasn't. Sweetheart, you're in the honeymoon phase. They haven't hit puberty le yet. They haven't. And no. I, I keep getting the memos from yeah. the mums who have kids in the Wait teenager for phase. Puberty. But I found newborn just so intense and so hard. I couldn't understand what they wanted. Now I can talk to them, you can reason, yeah. you can have those conversations, which is where I'm comfortable. Yeah. And look, that that's what I've noticed about it. The, the newborn to sort of like five when mm. they go off to school very very physical yeah. and and you're at it you're you're on you're all in the trenches the time. you're in the trenches yeah. but once you sort of hit that I don't know 12 13 14 when they start to get to puberty it then becomes a mind game and yeah. you you you've got to work on all the rules that you've put in place yep. before they setting get setting it up puberty. now yeah you've got yep. to set it up early because once they hit puberty there's all that peer pressure there's all those other things that are coming into play so you have to have the rules down by then yeah for some reason and this could be denial I <laughs> I've actually, Probably is. <laughs> I feel like I'm looking forward to the talking a bit more because that's yeah. where I feel more comfortable. But time will tell. It is very emotional. Yeah. It's very emotional. I'm pleased now my boys have left home. I can go and visit them for a couple of hours, love them dearly, and then wave goodbye and drive home. <laughs> it's great. It is interesting. You talk to a whole heap of different mums and everyone has a different preference of where they're more comfortable. Mm. But that's just motherhood and you've got to enjoy it while you're there. Hey, if you've just joined us, like, subscribe, share Mums at the Table and keep it locked right here. We're talking about teething, a topic that a lot of mums, when it, when it happens, go through it. We, go, we all go through it. Absolutely. So how can we cope when well, it comes to teething? So teething, there's a few things that are really important to keep in mind. The first thing is that when, the, when you see the tooth, that's when you're done. That's not the start of it. Right. And so can, babies can be struggling with painful gums right. for months leading up to when they, before their teeth actually come through. It's interesting you say that because I know that my babies actually started teething quite early. I thought mm. teething quite early at four months. Mm. That's, is that... that's at the early range of normal, but, yeah, okay. that's it, it is possible. perfectly acceptable for right. babies to start teething at that point in time. OK, so people who say that teething does not start four months, it's too early, it's the... It's, it's the process of that tooth coming out. So you're, out. you're unlikely to see a tooth come through the gum at four months old, right. but is the tooth going to start pushing its way up through the jaw? Absolutely. Okay. And, and that's the bit that hurts. Yes. And I guess even with mums who are breastfeeding mm -hmm. and teething mm -hmm. children, how can we help ourselves, like, you know, get through the pain? So you tend to notice that teething babies dribble a lot, they'll be cranky, they'll be unsettled. They may not have clingy. temperature. Oh, clingy, clingy. as all get go. But, and, and so this is where we need to utilise things that can be really useful. If your bub is of age where they can suck on bits of frozen fruit or those sorts of things, that can be really useful. Those right. cold teething rings or those really hard biscuits yes. are fabulous as well for them. The rusts are yeah, good for absolutely. them to just gnaw at. Uh, <laughs> gnaw is what they want to do and, they okay. will, and just make sure you have a really good supply of bibs because you will drool through... Hundreds and of those things. And how long does this teething process well, normally last? Well, 
last? Well, there's a lot of teeth that come through, okay. a whole mouth's worth of teeth. So mm -hmm. generally, most babies start around about the four-ish month mark. Five to six months is when they get their first tooth come through. Generally, my little niece didn't get hers come through until she was 11 months. Okay. But... But by around about two, they've gotten generally the full complement of all their teeth. Mm. Is there, you know, is there ways that we can help our babies to develop better teeth, I guess, when they're younger? Because I know with... I've been told with breastfeeding mm -hmm. um, that it can af actually affect the teeth. Um, particularly the baby molars. So you really want to be encouraging children to not, ha apart from things like a, like you know, having a being breastfed or having a bottle, bottle. in their mouth, yes, or a or a, or a, I guess a dentist designed dummy. Mm -hmm. It, it's ideal not to have other okay. things in their mouths, so sucking on sucking on their fingers or thumbs okay. can really affect tooth development there. So we want to encourage them to use things other than their hands to suck on. Yeah, is there other alternatives that we can, you know, help them? So I guess you just mentioned uh, some cold, yep. um, frozen... The frozen things. things. Uh, look, there, there comes a point where you need to get a good night's sleep and yeah. at that point in time, if we need to go down the path of a little bit of some infant's Panadol or yeah. Nerofen... Bon that, that works well, absolutely, A-OK. -okay. And you can give them Panadol? Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone needs a good night's sleep because babies don't like being in pain either. At the end of the day, we all need to function, so... Get that rest and do what you have to do to survive motherhood and teething. Hi guys, we're here and today we're going to talk about lactose intolerance. It's a topic that I've heard about so many times and if you want more topics just like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are here with Amanda. Hi Amanda. Hi. She's our nutritionist and dietitian and she's going to explain to us what lactose intolerance is. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So firstly, lactose is a type of sugar that is naturally found in milk and dairy products. Our bodies, they make the enzyme lactase, which is needed to break lactose down into smaller parts so that our bodies can absorb it. Okay, I've only just learnt about enzymes, so that's exciting, yeah. yeah? Yeah, so what happens with lactose intolerance is that there's not enough of this enzyme lactase to break all the lactose down, so there ends up being undigested lactose. In your which is, stomach, yeah, and it causes... That's what causes the symptoms, like cramping, okay. bloating, diarrhoea, those right. sorts of okay. things. Right, okay, so yeah. like irritable bowel type of... Yeah, it's a bit like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So what are some tips and recommendations yes. for us that yes. we can share with you guys? So firstly, lactose is, of course, primarily found in dairy products. Okay. So milk, cheese, yogurt, cream, ice cream, custard. So it's best to limit those foods and... I guess, just see how you respond to them. Okay. Because the other thing is that it's quite individualised, so... So not everyone yeah. suffers as bad as... Yeah, that's right. So most people are able to have some amount of lactose. It's a bit of trial and error, figuring okay. out how much you can have and what type of foods that you, you're you okay eat. with. Yeah. 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 Oh, that makes yeah. sense. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. So, for example, hard cheeses like cheddar as well as yoghurts are yeah. often quite well tolerated by most people. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so even yeah. people that have some sort of lactose yes, intolerance. Yeah, okay. they're usually able to tolerate those in, in small amounts. That's awesome. So what sort of substitutes? I can sort of see here what you've got, but can yes. you talk to us a little bit about, you know, yeah. some substitutes yes, that the people sure. have? Sure. So, of course, if you are avoiding certain foods, like dairy foods, it's important to replace those foods. Okay. And the main nutrient that we worry about is, is calcium, which is important to develop and keep bones strong and healthy. Calcium's the yeah. word, everyone. Yes. Yeah, so we need about two to three serves of calcium-containing foods each day, and that's what I've brought with me. So, so that's what it sort of looks like. Yeah, yeah. So you can get a number of different types of milks these days. So we've got soy milk and almond milk. Milk. You can also get oat milks. You can also get cow's milk um, that is lactose free as okay. well, as well as products like cheeses, yogurts, ice creams that are made from those milks too that you can have. Awesome. And then here are some other foods that also contain high calcium. levels of calcium. So, so you've got beans here? Yeah, beans as well as soy products, so tofu. So tofu. Yes. You um, can marinate that. Look at our recipes online. Yeah, and another thing I should say is when you're buying these milks or tofus is make sure that they are calcium fortified okay. too. right. There's also nuts and seeds. So oh, we've got thanks. chia seeds, sunflower seeds and almonds. And then your green leafy veggies as well provide you calcium too. So broccoli, bok choy, kale. 
I love this because these are sort of things you can have like some seeds in your hand for the day. You can just yeah. put it in your lunch. Yes. Thank yes. you so much. You know what? I've learned something today. Have you learned something? Because if you have, subscribe, like I said, to our YouTube channels and check out some more topics. Thank you for coming, Amanda. Thank you. We really appreciate <laughs> it. See you next time. Hey, so we're talking about tech hacks for busy mums. Rachel, hit me with it. What have you got? Well, the first one for all of us mums who are either having a kid who you're potty training or you're, you know, any kid, yes. even us, yes. is the toilet finder. Can help oh, you wow. quickly find a toilet, put in your location, and it'll tell you where the near nearest toilet That's is. That's perfect. So you're not, like, allowing your kid to have to hold or, you know, teaching them bad toilet training habits. Or going on so. the side of the road. Well, that's it. And you don't want any to have to clean up any mess. So that toilet finder is perfect, I think, for anyone training their child. Yes, so even for us as adults. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Especially for mums who've just had babies. <laughs> I think another one is, um, have you seen this app, Calm? It basically helps you to oh. control your breathing. It tells you how long you should take a breath in, how long you should take oh. a breath out. It helps you with just calming down as a mom. And I think we all need that those five minutes away in the um, bedroom to just, you know, wow. regroup yourself before you go back out and, and face the chaos of the world. Mm, calm. Yeah. Mm, use it, calm. So we've got calm, we've got toilet finder. Yep. Um, I know you were telling me a bit earlier about one that you said has been good for your family. I know. I recently came upon this... Um, app where you can give your child a phone, because I've been that mum that's been so strict that mm. they're not allowed any technology, but this app allows you to uh, control what your kid sees, and I think it's called Guided Access. Okay. So it's actually a setting that's in your a Android or iPhone, whatever phone you have, and you can actually put, put your security settings on to this Guided Access and allows your kid to only access the sites that you want them to to, um, to view, but also you can put a duration on it as well. And okay. I think that's great. I think it's beyond great because just recently my son was almost deleting everything from our iCloud and I happened Wait. to look over at the moment where he was about to hit the delete button. Oh, no. Yeah, so I think having something like that would have been... Yeah. I should have had it on. Well, I, I think it's great too on. because even like with photos, mums, we love taking photos. So even protecting, like having a password to protect your photos so that your kids can look at themselves because, you know, they all love their selfies. Yeah, but um, not delete it. But not delete it. Exactly. And that brings me to another great app, which is um, an, uh, the USB. I think it's like, uh, I don't know what the name is, but you plug it into your phone and it saves all your photos. Oh, really good. And it can save like heaps of photos. So, I know another one that's great because um, everyone wants to feel organized is Cozy Family Organizer. Okay. So it allows you to set up calendars for the different members in your family and you can color code them so you can see when so-and-so has their football practice or when, you know, you have your meeting at work so right. there's no conflicts in the schedule wow. and just help you get your family organized. That's great. I love that. I think we really can benefit as mums from some of these apps. We've talked about some really great apps. Have you got any more that would help Mums. Definitely. I think Common Sense Media is good for just evaluating the movies that your kids are watching. Oh, it wow. does a review for you so you don't have to watch the movie before and just kind of lets you know if there's any swear words or anything in there that you want to know about as a parent so you can decide if you want your kids to That's good because you have like teenagers that want to go with their friends to watch a movie. So and who has Common time Sense to Media. go and watch it before them. Well, that's right. So you can check out to make sure that it's safe exactly. for them to watch and you know what your kid's doing. So I think it's so important to have use technology but be smart about it. That's the tip, I think. Great tip. Thanks, Rach. Okay, mums. Worst time of the day. You've just fed them. You've just bathed them. You're trying to get them into bed. Is this the time you read the books and do the stories? Absolutely, because that's the only thing that would calm my kids down. Like, the bath and dinner would hype them up. It would drive me nuts. Um, but, yeah, so reading was that one thing that would sort of settle, you know, them a little bit for them to lie and down. And you? Yeah, no, not what? always, not always, you know. But, um, yeah, it would help settle them. But I, my kids have always taken a long time to get to sleep anyway. They like to think. Yeah. Um, but reading was one of the things that calmed them down. Yeah, same for me. I used to do it straight after the shower or the bath and we'd get... And because mine is so close in age, they'd get into one bed and we'd read the books. What was your... Do your kids have a favourite book? Oh... There's always a certain book that you read over and over and over again, and I can't remember all of them now. There were so many of them. I think um, one of them was The Green Sheep. Oh, yes. Yep. yep. <laughs> that book is, like, ripped at the moment. But I love that they they love the reading, and I love that they started to sort of read the story and memorise it as well, and it's it's really important to them. Like, it becomes a really special time for them, mm. don't you think? Mm. And because it's, it's a nurturing time yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, we've got a great article in Mum's 
at the, the table, table magazine yep. about reading and the benefits of reading to your kids. You know all about this from where you come from. So what's all the <laughs> benefits for the kids for reading? Oh, look, oh, you can only read, what I guess, what the experts tell you, but they say it's really good for your child's mind. It sort of starts building those pathways. And I think even teachers I have found, you know, there are some teachers who say, oh, you read to that child a lot when they were really? young. Really? Yeah, and they can sort of tell that they're just, I guess that they're really in tune with all that sort of stuff right. and understanding the comprehension and all that. And, I, you know, that's the technical side of things. But I, I like that it's the nurturing side. Mm. And your kids look forward to it every day and they know when you miss it. Oh, and you can't skip a page either. <laughs> they know when you've done that. No, you can't skip. Yeah. <laughs> they know that book inside out. out. But it is a really beautiful time. Um, what did you do with your boys? What was their favourite book? Oh, uh, the Very Hungry Caterpillar was Aaron's favourite and because we've got Kiwi heritage, we have to have Harry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy. And look, my kids love Bible stories. Oh, I think yes. kids love hearing that. But that is all we have got time for today. We want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and some good time with your family. We will catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. <laughs>